Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 8th, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, as I'm recording this, the Internet Storms on our website is actually not reachable. Hope I'll be able to upload this uh, podcast soon. Had some uh, firewall issues. Uh, they're currently sort of in the recovery phase, trying to reload configurations and the like. So hopefully this uh, podcast will go live in an hour or something like this. I'll record it now and then hopefully just have to press the button to push it live. But if you saw any issues with uh, honeypots, for example, being able to upload or our API not responding, that was because of this uh, firewall outage. Well, and it's, of course, black hat time now in Vegas. And we have a couple stories that essentially broke as a black hat talks. First one here is a blog post by Oligo. Oligo looked at browsers connecting to localhost. This behavior has been abused in the past where you could essentially sort of port scan a visitor on the loopback IP address. And this is interesting because you often have things like support tools or, for example, TeamViewer and other uh, tools, debug tools and such that listen on loopback and don't require authentication. So in recent years, browsers stopped loading resources from loopback if the request was cross-origin use. So you can still load a page from a loopback web server. And of course, developers often do that and it will work just fine. But if you're then loading the same page from another web server, it cannot connect to loopback. Oligo found that uh, there is, however, a trick how you can bypass this restriction, and that's the IP address 0000. zero, zero, zero. That IP address is not supposed to work, but where security gets most interesting is where sometimes standards aren't really all that well obeyed. And that appears to be the case here where browsers will happily connect to 0000, zero, zero, zero and treat it like loopback. Officially, this IP address is sort of a little bit an any IP address. Like if you have a server listening on 000, it will listen on all IP address or all interfaces on a particular host. So it doesn't really make sense to use it as a destination IP. But as so often, if you take something that doesn't make sense and try to make sense of it, then you end up with some dangerous behavior, in this case, with requests to the loopback address. Apparently, it's being addressed now in browsers. Safari Chrome apparently have addressed it. Firefox appears to be a bit behind. And remember, same origin policy only provides partial protection here because you still may have the ability to send simple requests, even if JavaScript then may not be able to see the response. Then we got uh, two Apple stories. First one is really not a story. It's just a quick note that Apple did release updates uh, to its operating systems uh, today, but they don't really include any security content, so no real bugs being addressed. There is one security-related bug that's being addressed, and that's for macOS. Apparently, after the last update, uh, there were some issues disabling or enabling advanced data protection. That's where you have a complete end-to-end -end, uh, protection of traffic to and from iCloud. So this is being addressed here. And Apple also released a brief note stating that Gatekeeper will be beefed up in the next version of macOS Sequoia that's probably going to be released in October. Gatekeeper prevents you from starting software that's either not signed or not coming from the App Store. Now, in existing versions of macOS, it's pretty easy to bypass it. You just have to control click and then you'll be able to open the software after a quick prompt. Well, in the new version, it will take a couple more clicks. You now have to actually go to the privacy and security settings and then review the information about the software before you can allow it to run. Uh, that's a little bit like uh, when software installs uh, drivers and such. Uh, you have a similar uh, dialogue in uh, the privacy and security settings. And then another Black Hat related item, SafeBridge published a blog post showing how it's possible to downgrade Windows systems 
to earlier vulnerable versions of uh, software by using actually the Windows update process. Apparently the key weakness here is a registry key that defines which uh, program is actually being used to parse something called the action list. Uh, when you're downloading a Windows update, there are all the files that are part of the update. Then action list basically describes what to do with uh, these files. And well, uh, this uh, registry key can be altered with that an attacker could actually trick the update process into calling a bad binary and then of course has full control over how these updates are being applied which could then also lead to the updates being actually downgraded or basically old versions of the software being applied. What makes that even worse is that when you're checking if the updates were applied, it still shows up. So it's not easy to detect that the updates that you applied earlier have been removed. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening. And well, the site is still down. Hope it's coming back up soon and you get to listen to this to the usual time. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.